So you shoot the footage and you're ready to edit, but maybe you're having some color problems. Maybe your skin tone seems off, the colors might be a little bit weird, maybe you have a color cast and you're not exactly sure what to do. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go over the basic of color correction and specifically why understanding the scopes will vastly improve your color process. So once you start color grading, the scopes are immensely important to the entire process. However, you have waveforms, RGB parades, vector scopes, etc. So stick around if you really want to improve your color process till the end of the video. Let's get into it. So what are your scopes that everybody refers to in your different editing platforms? Well, see so your scopes are a scientific way of measuring your exposure and color of your image. See, every monitor is different that the end product is being viewed on. And also, whatever you're editing on, whether that be your laptop or your computer or a different monitor, may or may not be calibrated. So using the scopes can give you a scientific way to make sure that your image looks good on every single screen. Now just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to describe each scope and what situation each one is best for. Stick around till the end of the video to talk through workflows and how we're gonna switch up the color when we're actually doing the correction here. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the waveform. All right, so we have this image here. This was from a wine trip that we took, a little travel video that we did for another vlog here. And we, if we go up to the scope right here in the color channels here, you see waveform and there's a bunch of different ones. The first one I'm gonna start with is the Luma there. Now, as mentioned before, the scopes, you use the scopes to judge brightness and color. The waveform expresses the image from left to right and these spikes that you see here are the brightness of the image. Now that is expressed all the way from negative 20 up to 120 and you see it says Luma there. Anything under zero is going to be crushed blacks and anything over 100 is typically going to be blown out highlights. You can push it a little bit further than that and HDR is also something to talk about where you have a little bit more of a range which is why the scopes do go from negative to over 100 there. But for the purposes of our argument here, because we're mainly dealing a Rec. 709 image, we're talking about blown out highlights being over 100 and crushed blacks being 100. So if I was to add some contrast into this image here, just real quick, I'd bring the shadows down to 100. The highlights are already kind of there. You see if I go a little bit over, the whites are a little bit blown up. What you're seeing represented here on the scope is the image from left to right. Actually, if I change the view here, and I go to vertical and put it under here, all the different parts of the image is represented in this wide area of the scope here. Now it's also good to know that there are different type of waveforms here. So the first waveform that I typically use is this one here, which is the Luma waveform. And like I said, I'm using that to judge the brightness of the image to make sure it was exposed properly. So if I come here, um, and you can actually see what I'm talking about here in this image. This was a sunrise image here, and you could see the spike in the waveform there on this particular image here, but you see that big tall spike up over 100, that is where the sun is sitting in the image. And the Luma curve is really great one to start with to judge your brightness there. All right, the other waveforms that we have here is actually a mixture of all of these. So the other one that you have is that a lot of people use is gonna be the RGB parade. And this is going to be the exact same scale. Actually, if I show you the Luma here first, you see a similar looking image and then squished up next to each other in the RGB parade is the waveform of each primary color. So we have that represented here and this is the brightness of each color. Now, if I move up the highlights, you can see the, the R3 images are moving there because I'm just adjusting the brightness here. However, the RGB parade is also really good for balancing color. Now in this particular image, there's a lot of blue. There's a lot of, he has a green shirt on, he's red. The skin tones are gonna be in the red as well. So the reds are a little bit higher. If you are balancing out this image, let's just see here, if I came to the highlights and took some red out just to balance it a little bit, you see it's changing the look of the image there. And if I change here, some of the contrast, 
you can use this to balance out the image there to make sure that they are matched. That's a perfectly balanced image. The only thing I would say there is it also depends on the colors that are in your image to make sure that is balanced. So if I come back to this one here, a little bit more greens in the highlights so you can see this one has already had a lot of contrast, but a wider image there. And similar thing like with the with all the waveforms, your midtones are gonna be here somewhere in the 50 to 75 range. Your blacks are gonna be from the 25 down to the zero. So with the RGB parade, you could look at the individual colors to see what you need to adjust when the white balance is off in an image there. Also, if you need to, if the RGB parade looks a little bit too jumbled up, you can look at each channel individually. So that's the red, the green, and the blue. All this is the same thing as the regular waveform, just showing you each individual color if you really need to dial something in there on a particular color there. And then the parade there is just all of them squished together so you can see how they balance against each other. And then very similar, but a little different look, which is great as well, is going to be your RGB parade, which is also very useful. So now this is the full red, green, and blue, but all blended together there. And now with this one here, same thing, images expressed from left to right, highlights, shadows, expressed from negative 20 to 120. You can see where everything is there. But if you do need to balance something out and make it perfect white there, you could come to the mid-tones and see here, maybe there's a little bit too much green in the mid-tones there. So I'm gonna even that out there with some red. Or in the highlights there, maybe we have a little bit too much red. So we're gonna add in, um, or a little bit too much blue in the highlights there. So we're trying to make it a little bit more balanced there. But you could see when the colors line up in a particular area in the scope and you need to make it more white there. This is also really good for balancing specific areas in the image as well in regards to color in the highlights, shadows and such. Next up, what we're gonna have, the other really useful scope is going to be your vector scope. Now the vector scope is a color wheel and it's showing you the intensity of the colors and saturation of the colors in your image expressed on this color wheel here. So if we jump back into Final Cut Pro here, we could see this particular image here. Now, the vector scope is good for two main things. So as I said, we have the wheel here and we have all the colors on the wheel. You see it changing from red, orange, green, blue, magenta there. If I put a color chart up on the screen here, as you could see, the vector scope is going on all directions because every color is pretty much represented in this color chart. And you can see the colors going off into different directions. So when you're looking at an image, the vector scope can be good to see what colors are going in what direction and how saturated a color is. However, the main thing that I use the vector scope for is for skin tones, and this is how I balance an image. So what can happen a lot of times, especially when you're shooting run and gun stuff, like this was at a wedding, you're shooting in different scenarios, whether you set your out of balance, you might be running and gunning. However, what I like to do here is to check the skin tones. I would come in and draw a mask. Let's add a draw mask there. So we have a good piece of skin here, which is relatively good um, exposed or whatever. And as I mentioned here, this line is the flesh line. Regardless of the color of the skin, you want the skin tones to sit on this line. If it's off here, it's probably too green or magenta or just heading in the right direction here. So in this case here, especially, let me take the mask back off here just real quick there. There is a lot of green going around here. Like people are wearing green, but there's grass, there's the trees, lights going everywhere, reflecting back onto the face there. The white balance might not be right, as I mentioned there. So we see that the flesh line is a little bit off there. Let me come here real quick. Again, don't worry about what I am doing to fix it there. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So stay tuned. And I'm gonna pick the skin right there and just shift it back onto that line there just to fix it up. And it is, uh, we haven't done the full grade yet there, but we can add in some saturation to the skin there as well. So again, the vector scope, when you mask out a piece of skin, you want it to be lined up on this flesh line. And that's where I mainly use it there. Let me take the mask back off and then I can show you what happened there. It is really subtle. Let me full screen that there for you. And then you could see, you see in the skin just right there, it just brightens it up and makes it a little bit more red. And I typically balance for the whole image there for using the vector scope there to fix that up. 
All right, lastly there, aside from the waveforms and the vector scope there, you're also gonna have the histogram. You should be familiar with this from your camera there. I don't really use the histogram in Final Cut Pro in terms of looking at the image from left to right and how it is expressed there. In fact, the waveforms to be way more useful in judging exposure there. And then using either the RGB parade or the overlay and the vector scope to make sure the color in my image is right there. Now, hopefully you have a better understanding of how the waveforms work and which ones to use there. So now that we have our understanding of the scopes, click on the next video right here and we are going to talk about the different tools that we can use to adjust our image once we're able to read it and see that it is right or wrong or which direction we want to talk to. We need to figure out the workflow using the different tools that either be the color wheels, the hue saturation curves, color curves, color boards, that kind of things. So click that in this next video and we will get to the workflow there. I'll see you over here.